Hello, this is Will Faber from Art to Ride, and today we're looking at a first submission by Roxana of the horse Bex. Bex is 15 years old. She got the horse when she when the horse was nine. It sounds like the horse was a giveaway, um, and then <clears throat> she was ridden by someone else, and uh, and then Roxana got the horse and had it for a while. And then she had a tendon injury, so she's just coming back from all of that. It sounds like, and the good news is that this is actually looking pretty good. She's gone through a phase of lunging the horse, um, and then the horse got injured. She had the horse going quite well, it sounds like, and then the horse got injured and was off for a while. So she's just getting started getting this back going again. Uh, I would have kind of liked to have seen your lunging work, but that's all right. We'll go with what we see here. Um, the good news is, from what you tell me, the horse was very upside down, and you spent some time trying to get it over its back, and I think have... have uh, Done a commendable job so far. Is it all the way there yet? Not quite, but you're certainly on your way and looking better. The walk actually here looks quite good. And there she starts to swing a little bit more actively. And you're getting some good work in the trot as well. The horse hasn't quite gotten to the point in the trot work, and when we get to that, you'll see that she hasn't quite... Like here, she is keeping her neck out pretty nicely long. When we get to the trot work, she kind of just cranks the neck over only so far and doesn't really reach all the way from the withers, um, which will do a lot and has a lot to do with why she looks a little inconsistent in the trot. So we'll get to that here in a few minutes. But the walk work is coming pretty nicely. Once again, here too, I'd like to see the stretch a little bit deeper than it is. But the activity is coming pretty nice. As I said, I think you're on, you're headed in the right direction in all of these things. This is an interesting horse because it, its body looks quite good, and then you get to its neck, especially when you get to the trot, and you can see that this horse was, you know, just kind of gone. Its neck is stuck in a position. It can't really just let it, the whole neck out from the base of the withers, which is what has to happen. So we have to get this horse to stretch all, every horse, you know, in order to get them to really connect, must stretch the entire length of the neck. So with different horses, that's going to be different how deep they go. Some horses have longer necks than others. And this one, the good news is, has quite a nice long neck, but it just isn't quite using all of it, which is why we get so much inconsistency in the rhythm of the horse and coming on and off the forehands. We'll see when we get more to the trot work. But if you can keep going in this direction and keep just trying to get that stretch deeper, like for instance here, the rhythm is quite nice. It's getting better. But you get the feeling with this horse that it never quite really swings the shoulder all the way out. It has moments when it gets better than others, but there's a tightness there, and that's simply because you're not getting the entire length of the neck. Now that looks a better there. And notice that as the longer the neck gets, the better the walk looks, and certainly the better the trot does too as we get into that. Now you said you just had your saddle... Uh, refitted and it looks like it's sitting you pretty well here. I'm, I, of course I can't see what the channel looks like or if there's any interference anywhere but it looks like you're sitting pretty straight here. Your, uh, your leg is pretty nicely underneath you. Once in a while your leg tends to get out in front of you a little bit but that's not bad where you have it there. You're get, getting your leg down underneath you where it should be and you're stretching up pretty well in your upper body. So the biggest takeaway there for the walk work that we just saw is I would just like to see more of it before you go to the trot. In other words, I would like to see the horse stretched all the way down. I'm wondering if you're doing any work in hand because that would be another great thing to see if we could see that a little bit. So you see with this horse, it gets starting pretty well and the neck kind of comes over to a certain extent. And you see how she keeps jerking that neck up and watch how her back kind of drops out from under every time she does that. So we need to get a little more active swing coming through and a little deeper stretch. You can see how her neck is up in this position. You see how it's kind of thick across the bottom of the neck. And you can see how she has that kind of stabbing look to her front leg. See, this shoulder doesn't really swing right here. So this horse has a nice big back end and it ought to, once it gets really swinging over her back, um, she's going to be a really good mover. But as I said, she looks like a horse that never really matured in her forehand. That is, she never had enough time when she was growing with her neck out in front of her to really get the withers up where they belong and let those shoulders really develop the way we would like them to do. But as I said, from what you told me in your letter, this certainly looks like an improvement over what you might have had when you first got this horse. It sounds like she spent a lot of time going upside down. See, that looks a little bit of there. And notice every time we get that little stretch a little more like that, the shoulder starts to swing a little more actively like that. Now, she tends to want to curl up. She looks like she's been a, 
a horse that's probably been overflexed in the neck, because that's what usually when we see that, the neck doesn't get any longer. She just curls over from the third or fourth vertebra. So that tells you you have a little bit of a weakness there, but, um, but she still needs to get that neck out much longer than it is. You can see how every time it comes up, you can literally see her start to stab and pull herself along by her shoulders. So I have a feeling this is a horse that spent a lot of time doing that until you started doing this work. But she's really built to move quite well. I mean, she has really nice hawk action. You know, she's plenty that once you get her swinging over her back, she should easily be able to, to begin to swing up and push up into her back a little more. But you can see what happens there. Every time the head comes up, she starts to stab. The front shoulders start to stab, and she starts pulling there. She starts to swing a little better. So for every little bit that you get that neck a little longer, it looks better. You can see she's just kind of struggling there a little bit. It looks a bit like you're trying to ask her to go forward and get a little more active, and she doesn't know quite what to do. So she tries to do a sort of stumbly sort of canter on you, is what she's doing there, rather than swinging more actively through. That's a little better there. So you did a good job of getting to the other side of that. She didn't get too uh, fractious with you at that moment. And certainly looks better now. Now what you might want to do in your workouts is come back more often to the walk. Because you can see here what's happening is the neck is just really not lengthening from, from up at the withers. It's just kind of cranking over in the third or fourth vertebra. Now that's still better than see she's trying to get the neck out, but you still have, I mean, this horse should be able to stretch all the way to the ground with, the, with the, the length of her neck there. So just know that you just have to keep working on that. But you're certainly headed in the right direction. You're not pulling on the horse. You're doing a good job of just getting her active and sending her forward. Like that starts to look pretty good there. And you see how that she starts to swing that shoulder more freely and you lose some of that stabbing action of the front legs. And that looks better there. Notice it gets a little bit longer. Starts to look like this horse almost looks like two different horses. It has this nice big uh, back end, but it, it's, it has nowhere to go because everything is stopped there at the shoulders. Watch again. As soon as that head comes up, you see how she starts to stab and pull with the front legs. So my biggest suggestion right off the bat here would be to spend more time, you know, when you do this, come back to the walk more often. Try to let each little section of the trot work help you. <coughs> Excuse me. I would really like to see you do some work in hand with this horse as well to really try to get that neck longer. Once again, you want to always prove to yourself that the horse is capable of doing by doing this kind of stuff from the ground as you were doing with your with your lunging work, you said. But the work at hand really helps the horses to get off uh, to a good start because we're not on their backs and we're working in the walk and we can really get them to stretch. So I never try to stretch a horse in the trot until I've stretched it in the walk. That is, I get it all the way there. Then I begin to work on the trot work. And once again, this is not, you know, it's not bad. She's beginning to get the neck out there. It looks better. It's just not enough. So she just still have to get more there. She starts to look better there. Though, once again, she starts to crank over when you start trying to soften her much rather than letting the neck lengthen all the way from the top of the withers there, which is what we need to see. And you can see that every time she does, you can see right there when she comes up how she just starts pulling with her shoulders and everything becomes very labored looking. The back end starts to look like it's falling out behind her. And then she starts to swing again there, and you see how the back end begins to come underneath the body. So you're definitely having moments when you're getting there in the right direction. The horse starts to free itself and starts to move a little better. We just need to take this another step further in getting her to stretch even a little bit deeper yet. You're keeping yourself in good balance while you're trotting. 
quite good. I think you're doing a good job of what you're doing in terms of your riding position. You're not interfering with the horse. You're trying to get out of its way. You're giving it the reins that it needs to be able to keep working her, but yet you're trying to soften her a little bit like you are there and get her back into the stretch. So each time she comes down a little bit, it looks a little better. As I said, what I would do where I you though is come back to the walk more often and try to, you know, when you get a really good section of so you you know of trot work, which you're getting at times, but then you're just keeping on going. So when you really get it nice, like right there, bring her back to a walk, make a nice supple transition back to the walk and let her try to get the neck out even a little bit longer and then go back to the trot again. So you're you're doing more back and forth and really rewarding her and letting her know when she's doing a better job. Like there, that starts to get a little bit longer. Once again, you can see, see that she wants to curl behind the bridle, but we still got to get more neck out, but that's much better. But as I was saying, when you get those nice moments when it really feels good, try to reward her right then and there and bring her back to a walk and try to let the walk stretch out a little bit more. Like when you get right there would be the moment before it falls apart, if possible. Of course, don't worry about making a fantastic downward transition. Just make it as best you can. Right there, now that's starting to look good again. No, that was good. That was a good time to make that downward transition. And look how much better the walk is after that. So as I said, I would mix more walk in as you go if you can't keep it consistent and really reward her for when she's really correct. This mare has a lot of potential from what I see here. She, once again, if we can just get that neck to develop, get the withers to come up through the shoulders a little bit more, I think you'll have a very nice horse here. And even just watching your walk work here, you can see how she's there for a minute and we lose the stretch. And, and of course, just keep watching as you go, as she stretches down there, look how the walk begins to swing and begins to get some kind of regular rhythm. That's what we're looking for. Always remembering that though, what we do in training horses is always about the movement. We must get in mind that rhythm, that consistent movement, not a, not a physical position. You know, too often people are trying to Worry about what horses look like when they stand still, if you will. I see people like you know, who will overwork halts and things like that over and over again. The trick about halts is the more you do them, the more difficult they become. I tend to halt my horses, especially young ones, once during a session, unless I'm stopping for some reason to change something. And that walk is not bad there. It just needs to get longer in the neck there. As you watch as the neck gets longer, we see all of a sudden she starts to reach out a little more. Yeah, it starts to get a little better there. And you can see there when it gets too slow, how everything just kind of stops. We tend to lose the flow like she gets there. And then she starts kind of dragging herself. And then you get a little more active and she starts to stretch into the contact and she starts to swing a little better. She's kind of an interesting horse to look at here in that, you know, she has quite a nice big back end. And then to me, she looks like her shoulders were just never developed correctly or her neck. So she looks kind of big behind and puny up in front, if you will, because she really has no top line when you get beyond that nice big bottom that she's got there. Now, when see her belly is still a little pendulous as well, that, that you can see that it kind of hangs down. She really isn't, which tells you whether or not the horse is working through her back or not. We can still see that her belly kind of hangs down a bit and she's a bit uh, enlarged through her flanks there a little bit, a little like a pregnant mare, if you will. So the more we get her to work up to the back, the more you'll see that disappear and you'll see that, that outline you see, that you see clearly there, that, that belly kind of hanging down. We want to see that improve. Now, see how he's got his neck there? That's what we want it to be all the way down there like that. That's what we want to get that kind of length of it while we're moving. And once again, that's why we'd like to do the work in hand. So if you can try some of that work in hand, if you've watched some of the videos on that, 
give it a try and see if you can't do that before you get on her and really get the next stretching before we get up on its back. Because remember, the horse doesn't have a well-developed top line and we get on it, it tends to just sink in the back if it doesn't have enough strength and then it's almost impossible with the weight to really get the horse to swing through. So if we can get it all happening before we get up, it's much easier for the horse to understand what we want. And of course, to not damage them in the process. Always remembering that every step we take on a horse with it not over its back is like having the shock absorbers off of your car. It will kind of rattle everything else up to pieces. Horses are the same way. If they're not working through their backs, all the concussion of movement goes into the joints. Which is, of course, why we see so many horses being retired at such a young age these days, because so many of them are being ridden either hollow or in a forced position over the back, which is just as damaging as if they're hollow, because it's done in tension. Walk is getting a little better here. Once again, you see, I like how you take a little contact and just soften her and then let it out. Keep asking for that little bit more. Every inch you get of the neck going out and down, you get another inch of movement. Look at it that way. There you go. This is starting to look better here. Realizing how important the walk is to training horses. If I don't have a good walk, I don't trot horses. It's as simple as that, because it doesn't do me any good. If I get a good walk, and I build the walk correctly, when I ask for the trot, it will happen correctly. That is, when the horse is strong enough to do it. That's getting a little better. We can see each time she gets the neck a little bit longer, everything looks a little better, like that. You see, we kind of see an impulse there for a moment, kind of move like a little bit of a wave come through the horse's back. And that's what we want to feel. Remember, ultimately, we want to feel like we're riding the wave coming through the horse's back. And as the horse gets trained, we're able to focus that wave more narrowly, that is, to you know, up underneath us, so we get more lift, if you will. But it becomes very consistent. Good there, starts to get a little better. So I think you're doing a very good job with this horse. I would like to see a video sometime of you lunging and see how that is going. And the work in hand, I think, would be very helpful for you to do before you get up and start riding every day. If possible, just to get her really stretching that neck out. Because that's still her, her problem there. You know, you see the horse that we have online now that you'll see uh, Stephanie's horse named um, Callie is quite like this one. A nice, big, moving horse, but her neck was just cranked over and she couldn't release her back. And it's taking us quite a while to get it there. But she's coming around. They all do. Some just take a little bit longer than others. I mean, the horse has been ridden for 10 years hollow. Well, it's not going to, you know, go right side up in 10 minutes or 10 days. Once in a while we get lucky, but most of them take a while when they've had that kind of training for long enough. It takes them a while. They really literally have to re, you know, really learn how to, uh, to walk and talk, so to speak. Or to walk and trot and canter, if you will. There you go. Now that's starting to look better there. See how she starts to get a little bit longer. So you're definitely on the right track here. We just still need to keep going and get the neck longer. But that was good. Notice how much better this was after you did that walk work. So that was the right thing to do and come back to the trot again. Short periods of work instead of long periods of work. It takes a long time, you know, to get horses consistently enough, you know, to keep 
to keep even a consistent trot for, say, 15 or 20 minutes at a time is a long time. There, that's even better. Now, notice that those shoulders are swinging much better all of a sudden there. So that you had some moments that were good. Now, you notice she has a moment the head comes up and she starts to stab and grab again. That's better there. You see her start to see, begin to see a little bit of movement through the back. Much better. Good there, right there. That's yeah. There we go. That's coming very nicely. So once again, we still got some length to go there, but that's much better. That's the best we've seen so far. But once again, you can kind of see this horse how how immature she looks in front. You know, through her shoulder development. Unfortunately, so many horses are started. You know, too young. They're brought up and they're immediately uh, put into phony frames and expected to stay there. So. They stop moving over the back and start dragging themselves along with the shoulders, which is what you can see this horse doing every time that you lose her over a back. That's really quite nice there. Now, that's probably the best you've had. Watch for that moment. And watch as the head comes up. You see how she starts to pull again. there so that's a good improvement yeah that's starting to get a little bit longer there so I think you're doing a great job here I mean I love how you're you've realized that holding onto the mouth of the horse is not the way to ride a horse as she experienced that you know your horse after a while just said hey I don't like this so, you know which none of them ever do just think about it. If you're holding against the mouth of the horse, you are punishing the horse all the time. So they all eventually, and if you're doing that, you're ultimately causing a great deal of damage to the joints and things because they're not moving correctly, because they're not moving on their own and over their backs or their intention. Once again, the roll crew people who do all that, yes, their horses are kind of over their backs, but in a very, very tense way. Once again, tension is very damaging. Talk to anybody who trains any kind of athletes, and they'll tell you that. That's why sports teams have, you know, uh, psychologists who work with their their uh, team members, you know, to help them overcome tension and nervousness and about competition. Well, horses feel that same thing. If they feel like they're constantly being punished to do something, they're not going to want to do it for long. Some will go along with it for a while, depending on their confirmation on the confirmation, but their mental attitude more than others. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. So I think you've done a good job here. We've seen a big improvement from the beginning to end. It was much better after the walk work. We still have a ways to go. You can see how she wants to just kind of crank behind a little bit. And that's the other thing we have to heal too. So we've still got about a foot deeper we need to get this horse's neck. Like it was when she was uh, scratching herself there. That You can see that she has a long neck and she wants to get, we just want to get it longer and longer. But notice that every time it does come down and she reaches out, how the shoulders start able to move freely. So you've done a good job here. Keep up the good work. I think this will be really nice horse and, and well worth the trouble you're putting into it. And even at this age, this horse can mature. That is, the, we'll see a maturing of the rest of the horse's body. That is, as the withers come up through the shoulders and she actually develops a top line, she'll lose that look that she has now of kind of two different horses. Like the front end looks like one horse and the back end looks like another horse. That walk is coming better there, too. So lots of transitions back to the walk like you did in this video, getting her longer and longer and longer. And don't be, don't be thinking about bringing her up until she gets much longer than she is now. That is in terms of bringing her head and neck up. She's still got a ways to go to get all the way there before you can even think about that. Good job, though. This is Will Faber from Archer Ride. I look forward to seeing another video from you in the not-too-distant future. I think uh, you've made great strides with this horse, and I look forward to seeing where you go with it. Nice. Notice that there. The neck gets longer, and she looks better and better, as they all do. And it will be a fun one to watch, as I said, as you'll see this horse mature physically. That is when her front end begins to develop correctly and the withers really come up through the shoulders and we develop some top line. She won't look so weedy in front and big behind. All right, great job. Look forward to seeing you again. It's Will Faber. Thank you.